All right, all right, all right. We are live here at the GSMCpodcast.net. This is the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Uh, I have all your cool wrestling factoids Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific time, 11 p.m. Eastern on the network. We also talk about, you know, from things from AEW, the TNA, professional wrestling, Ring of Honor. Basically, if it makes headline news in the wrestling committee or community, we talk about it here on the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. So just kind of reflect on what we talked about real quick. We had our WWE Monday Night Raw review, our WWE NXT preview, and now we're going to talk about will Kevin Owens re-sign with the WWE? As of right now, it seems seems kind of dire, and I'm not you know trying to sound mean, just trying to sound a little realistic in this kind of aspect of it, which is always not fun. But before we do any of that, I urge you guys, you know, if you have a burning question or a hot take in terms of professional wrestling or just something you're dying to get off your chest, here at the GSMC Sports Network, we are all ears. This show is all about keeping the conversation lively, making sure your voice is part of the conversation, part of the mix. So don't be shy and drop those thoughts inside the chat. And if you really want to, if you really want to make sure your comment or question gets noticed, why not use that super chat um, under the chat box? You know, hit up that dollar sign and it's guaranteed that your comment and question will be featured on the show. Plus, it's a great way to keep the lights on in terms of bringing you even more awesome sports content. In this case, you know, professional wrestling content. We are absolutely a thousand and ten percent super, super grateful for each and every one of you guys who tune into the podcast daily. And uh, yeah, if uh, once again, if the super chat is not your thing, remember you can still hit us up at the gsmcpodcast.net. Hit up the tips and donations link. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Uh, you know, give me some of your professional wrestling hot takes. Love those. Overall, I want this podcast to be like a nice little ongoing conversation that we have between one another. And uh, yeah, remember to Superman punch that like a subscribe button to the show. Follow the show. Follow the network here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity, a thousand and ten percent. So don't be shy. Hit up those comments, guys, and it's gonna be awesome. Super chats, super stickers, because you guys are super awesome. So let's talk about some Kevin Owens. So Kevin Owens has recently been in contract conflicts with WWE. It's not really a surprise at this at this point in time because you know Kevin Owens, I feel like has been kind of in this shift of professional wrestling. Kind of this wrestling paradigm that you had that I feel like, you know, WWE had this idea that Vince McMahon would eventually leave WWE. They gave the reins to Triple H. Triple H lost the reins because Vince McMahon was like, oh, I want to come back and do this and that and the other. Then he had Vince come back for a couple of years. You see superstars like Kevin Owens suffer and also Finn Balor. Finn Balor suffer, suffer as well during this time. You know, and then, you know, Vince McMahon is kind of doing his thing. And then, of course, like, he had to retire. Now, you know, WWE doesn't even mention the name Vince McMahon anymore uh, because of everything between the, you know, the, the Janelle Grant allegations. And he's not even featured on, you know, WWE. T like, it's it, it's crazy. It's crazy a thousand and ten percent. And the person who kind of suffered along this journey, I feel like it's Kevin Owens. I feel like Triple H kind of had an, I kind of had the idea for him. But you know how Vince, Vince McMahon loves his nostalgia. He dropped his, his Universal Championship to Bill Goldberg, like, uh, I, when does that ever happen? Bill Goldberg also, you know, defeated The Fiend as well. And it, it's frustrating, especially with Kevin Owens. You know, when Kevin Owens enters the arena, he's not just this guy that people are like, oh, you know what, like, he's okay. He comes out, he has this loud, roaring theme song. The fans are behind him. He's a huge Canadian uh, professional wrestler. He's noticed all over Canada, French, you know, French Canada. And WWE, you know, of course, once when they have, you know, events in, you know, Canada, they like to exploit that. But overall for Kevin Owens, it I hate seeing him in this position because he seems like he was such a promising athlete coming out of NXT. And, I, you know, once again, Kevin Owens is kind of like that bad example of, uh, you know, how once when NXT superstars made it onto the WWE main rosters, how it didn't really work out. Of course, that's a side to you know, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Kevin Owens joins the list like Keith Lee, Alistair Black, Lars Sullivan, EC3. And it, it's just, it sucks. It, you know, it, it, I, I feel for Kevin 
Overall, I do feel like he goes out there and he gives it a thousand and ten percent all he has. It's the reason why I love watching, uh, you know, Kevin Owen matches and stuff like that. I feel like WWE, you know, he he got offered a contract by WWE. He got offered a contract. AEW did not match that contract, leaving Kevin Owens to ultimately decide should he take a pay cut to be in WWE at this point. I feel like he should. You know, a lot of people are like saying that he shouldn't, but I know WWE shouldn't have paid top dollar for Kevin Owens, although Kevin Owens have been, you know, he's been pretty great for WWE. But it it's hard to say. I feel like overall Kevin Owens could maybe, you know, I feel like his character could be bigger in AEW. But, you know, there's so many there's so many superstars that are going to AEW. It's like a, you know, one-stop shop kind of place and then somebody kind of moves on. Like you've seen that with, you know, CM Punk, Jay Cargo, you know, Cody Rhodes came back to WWE, showing that WWE is, of course, the, the main landscape in terms of professional wrestling. So to kind of keep your name in there in terms of basically everything, you know, professional wrestling, when you have, you know, when you're featured on SmackDown, he could be the United States champion, you know, that, but that's another thing when Kevin Owens and you saw it at Bash of Berlin with his match against Cody Rhodes. It, it just wasn't top tier. It wasn't um, people were like, oh my God, you know, like for me, most of the time on Saturdays, I do work. I do work. And then I'm like, I dread not watching the WWE pay-per-views because I'm like, shoot, I do not want to see, I do not want to miss the match between Roman Reigns and, uh, you know, uh, somebody, you know, for the WWE and SVD Championship. So uh, I'll like, you know, I'll record it. Bash of Berlin, I felt no regards. I, you know, I didn't record it. I watched, you know, I, I looked up the looked up the replay, you know, hours later after I found out everything that already happened. And it's just yeah, because I love being surprised as a professional wrestler enthusiast. But for this pay-per-view, it, it, it wasn't great. WWE Bash of Berlin wasn't great. But what matches you kind of had to look something, you know, what you like had to look forward to? Like Kevin Owens. Could could have been a bigger superstar if done right. But I feel like WWE creative had definitely, you know, caused detrimental, you know, harm to his character bookings. Now people automatically just assume Kevin Owens is, you know, going to be a part of a faction, then turn on him, then go for a singles championship and fail. Then he joins a faction again, turns on them goes after another singles championship and fails like this wash rinse and repeat mentality of WWE. You know, it, it, it worked for a little bit, but I think WWE fans are starting to catch on. I feel like Kevin Owens, he could be something bigger, but AEW man, oh, there's a lot of talent in AEW as well. It's not just a cakewalk. It's not guaranteed that once when you step onto the scene, you're going to become AEW continental champion and defeat Kazuchika Okada. It's not going to be guaranteed that you challenge for the EW TNT Championship and defeat Jack Perry or you defeat, you know, Brian Danielson. But overall, Kevin Owens could be taken better care of in terms of WWE. I feel like WWE should have let him go. I don't think they sh he should. Um, but a lot of, you know, a lot of speculations, a lot of contract talks is, um, you know, definitely, definitely in the talks, definitely in the talks right now. You know, Kevin Owens, you know, he hasn't won a singles championship in seven years. His last reign was the Universal Championship that he lost eight years ago. And, you know, he had his, you know, little slime light with Sami Zayn dethroning the Usos for the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania, which was good, which was cool. But Kevin Owens, and I feel like that's what WWE's kind of looking forward to is the future. In 2025, but what will Kevin Owens be? If he's going to be the same superstar, use that money to sign somebody big like Bobby Lashley. Because when you think of Bobby Lashley, you think of somebody main event. I see Bobby Lashley main event. Right off the bat, main event. No questions asked. When I see Kevin Owens, it's not the same talk. It's not the same talk. And, you know, it's brutal and it sucks. But I don't know. I feel like WWE will re-sign KO. And I feel like Kevin Owens needs to resign with WWE despite the con despite if I was Kevin Owens' agent, I would, you know, despite the money you could probably be getting somewhere else, AEW did not match their uh, didn't they were like they saw what Kevin Owens was asking and saw what WWE was offering. They were like, no, thank you. 
It's, you know, Kevin Owens, I don't think that you should look down on your talent. I don't think that you should, you know, look at what WWE is offering you as, you know, some kind of an insult. You're in the world of professional wrestling and it's hard to make it. It's hard to make a buck. It's hard to be that limelight because, you know, the WWE creative or wrestling creative writers could have you in different bookings and it's not your fault. It's not an indictment on your physical capabilities, your mic skills, because I feel like Kevin Owens does have some pretty good in ring mic skills. I love it. I, you know, I love it when Kevin Owens, you know, grabs a mic. He's very, he's very humorous. He's funny. Also, he's very controversial. Gets in your face. Fight Owens, fight. But as of right now, I'm going to, you know, if I was the agent of Kevin Owens, I'd be like, look, swallow your pride. Hope for a better year in WWE. And maybe, in, you know, next contract talks, we can get something better. But right now, you can't leave WWE. You make it AEW, I guarantee you, you're going to be the same. You're going to be in the same position you are now. You're going to be mid-carder. Maybe touch on main events here and there. But I think he's going to be mid-carder if he goes to AEW. A couple of reasons why Kevin Owens should sign with, um, you know, WWE. First and foremost, we have, you know, Triple H's influences on the new Paul Levesque era. Uh, when Kevin Owens won his uh, Universal Championship, uh, Triple H kind of deemed him the guy. Turning on Seth Rollins um, and having Kevin win the uh, championship. And, you know, once when I was talking about that uh, professional wrestling paradigm in WWE, where you had, you know, Vince and uh, Triple H and other creative people, you know, you know, putting their hands in. And maybe sometimes Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe, you know, dip their fingers in a little bit, too. And you're like, dude, like, well, what are we doing with this guy? Like, what's what, what what's happening here? And it just doesn't it just hasn't really worked out for Kevin and Kevin has felt the worst of it. I kind of like to compare his character to a lot of what Finn Balor is dealing with as well. Finn Balor started off hot of NXT, like what you saw, uh, you know, Kevin Owens, but then, of course, because, uh, you know, uh, Finn Balor had to relinquish the Universal Championship because of the soldier, shoulder injury with his match against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. And, you know, Kevin Owens, you know, didn't really have an injury. It's just that, you know, and he feels like his... Title reign, Kevin Owens uh, admitted on SmackDown that a lot of us kind of knew what he was alluding to. He kind of compared, it was tainted. It was tainted. Every single match he won, it was basically thanks to an interference by Chris Jericho. He won the championship because of Triple H, but um, it, it's just, you know, it's just it's just hard. And, you know, I to be able to be a main event player, I feel like Kevin Owens needs to... At this point, I'm not really too sure of how you could stay in the wrestling promotion industry in the same business for eight years and kind of being considered a, you know, a main event player. I don't want to condemn him to death. I don't want to say that he's DOA in terms of, you know, being promoted as a, perhaps a WWE champion. I don't want to say that because, you know, I don't want to, you know, curse anybody's career. I feel like Kevin Owens is talented. I do, and it's a damn shame that what's happened to his career. It's a damn shame, and it's uh, it's remarkable what he's kind of come from to be a wrestler where he is right now. I'm not trying to say that overall he should be accepted of that, and he should just you know, you know, take dimes over dimes, and you know, jump over dimes and take pennies. I don't want him to feel like he has to you know, kind of shoot himself low to be like, well, at least I'm a WWE superstar. Like, dude, like if you can go out there and think you can get better. Which I feel like he can, you know, it's, it's, I go for it, dude, go for it. But during this day and age, especially, and I'm not trying to sound like that father. I am a father of three and I'm not trying to say Kevin Owens is my son, but if you're in a business like the WWE, you are financially stable, your career is stable. You have that stability and you're going to sacrifice this. You're going to, you know, take the chance to go into AEW and it's still, it's still unpredictable what could happen at AEW. You don't know what's going to happen if you cross borders into Tony Khan's promotion. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, what if you wind up in the same spot you are in right now? And then, you know, all right, I'm just going to go back to WWE. They're going to lobe all the crap out of you in terms of your contract. They are going to be like, all right, this guy failed in AEW. I don't want to say I told you so, but now we're going to offer you less money. So I'm not saying Kevin Owens should just take the deal. But, um, yeah, maybe that's what I'm saying. Take the deal, Kevin. Take the deal. I'm just kidding. Moving forward, we have Asuka 
On the other hand, you know, women's division, you know, she signs a long-term deal with WWE. Good for her. We're going to kind of jump on the other side of that spectrum and, you know, kind of talk about how the, you know, Oscars featuring WWE, what this means for, um, you know, the Triple H, Paul Levesque era, and the women's division on Monday Night Raw, which sadly needs a revamp. So, hey, we're going to be back in about like 25 seconds. <laughs> 